nuclear power in En-ROADS. We're going to check out three important issues here. One of them, what is happening in the baseline scenario in En-ROADS for nuclear? Secondly, what about policy tests? And then third, comparison against other modeling teams' forecasts for where nuclear power is probably going around the world. Okay, let's check it out in En-ROADS. Let's go look at where it sits here in global sources of primary energy. This, of course, has coal, oil, gas, wind and solar, bioenergy, and up top, nuclear is in light blue. It is a little sliver, not a whole lot, relative to the rest of the world's energy supply heading out through the end of the century. So it is still growing over time, just not as fast and really not making that big of a contribution to the global energy supply. So why isn't it growing faster? Why don't we have more nuclear power? Well, let's look and see the cost relative to other supplies. I'm gonna click here on the cost of electricity, the marginal cost of electricity production for various sources in dollars per kilowatt hour. Here we can see coal in brown, natural gas in blue, this green line is wind and solar getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper through the economies of scale feedback loop, getting cheaper and cheaper. Here in light blue is nuclear power. We don't have much growth because it is much more expensive than these other sources. Of course, we could explore a subsidy. Let's see what will happen if we go down here under nuclear. And I'm going to put in a three cent per kilowatt hour subsidy. Watch as that price drops over time and it gets less expensive. When it gets less expensive, we can go see what happens with the primary energy demand from nuclear. Instead of the black line, in this scenario, nuclear capacity is growing and growing and growing. If we have that much growth, then we keep a little bit greenhouse gas net emissions out of the atmosphere. You see, there's a small drop here, but it doesn't register as 0.1 degrees C. It doesn't quite get us that much. Now, if it, as much as a seven cents subsidy, then and we shave off 0.1 degree. Why does it help? Why does it not help very much? Well, it doesn't succeed at keeping much coal out of the atmosphere out of the ground, excuse me, doesn't succeed at reducing emissions from coal very much, nor from natural gas very much. Two things are, one of the main dynamics here is something we've explored in other trainings, capital stock turnover delays. It takes a long time for natural gas and coal capacity to retire away and leave. There's you see it doesn't really bend the curve until the 2030s and 2040s. That's one of the big reasons that it doesn't really do that much. Now, we could get a bit more of a contribution. Let's go see some things that would actually get more nuclear around the world. I'm going to keep it subsidized that much. If we were to electrify transportation, in buildings and industry, then those two complementary policies of electrification with nuclear power leads to a much more significant drop in emissions and therefore drop in temperature. Going back to the baseline, we also could imagine uh, things that would lead to less nuclear power in the world. And the main one is competition with renewable energy, which would take some of its market share, or competition with a new zero carbon energy supply. I'm going to imagine that there is thorium fission or nuclear fusion that would lead to much less uranium-based nuclear power in the world. When you think about this issue, it's good to go under the three dots into the advanced view and consider some of the other considerations and equity considerations such as concern about risk of exposure to radiation from a nuclear meltdown or hazardous waste and other equity considerations here. Um, 
such as in mining and in waste sites. We like to build confidence in En-ROADS by comparing our results against those of other modeling teams. In this case, we have a graph from 2000 to 2100 of the integrated assessment models convened by the NGFS. You can see here in green, GCAM, and Ramai Magpie, and Message Globion, and their scenarios for primary energy from nuclear and exajoules a year. You can see that it tracks the history up till today, and then three of them, different scenarios, rising and falling, rising, falling or rising slightly and falling over time. We then compare our baseline and en roads to it. Here it comes, where we're right in the middle of the pack here from present times through around 2050 in the middle. And then in our scenario, rising much more than the others in the integrated assessment models. Now, we are also considering several other scenarios when we are comparing uh, two of them. Are the International Energy Agency's stated policy scenario. This is in orange. You can see it rising much more through 2050. And then two important scenarios from the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. The green line, their low scenario in 2022, and then purple, a high scenario. So then one of the questions is, how do we recreate their scenarios in En-ROADS? We want to be able to see what would be the system-wide implications of following those. So I'm gonna look at a couple numbers. You can see that kind of between the low and the IEA is around 40 exajoules a year by 2050, and then all the way up here about 75 by 2050 in the high scenario. So let's go to En-ROADS and recreate those scenarios. The best graph to look at is nuclear primary energy demand. There's that same baseline. And what we'll do is we're gonna subsidize and imagine subsidies around the world for nuclear. I'm gonna put it up to the maximum that we have on the slider here. And it's about seven, but I believe to get towards 40, it's about six-ish. Here we can go look in 2050, and it's a little higher, but in 2050, 44. So a six cent subsidy or maybe five cent subsidy, somewhere in there, will get that range of either the IEA stated policy or the IAEA steps. To imagine the high end of the IAEA steps, you need to crank this all the way up to seven cents a kilowatt hour. And in En-ROADS, you need to imagine that there would be a research and development breakthrough that would lead to a significant cost reduction in the technology. I'm gonna put in 16% here. And with 16%, then you can say, see that we can get up to here, what does it get to? About 78 exajoules a year in that very high growth scenario. So you can recreate some of the other scenarios and test against the other modelers out there in the world. Overall, with En-ROADS simulation of nuclear power, you can see these big three points. The baseline, the relatively modest contribution in the baseline, um, some contribution of avoided emissions when we subsidize nuclear power, but also some of the other dynamics that are going on that lead to having more or less. And then also the comparison of this against other scenarios from other modeling teams. Hope this was helpful. Go get them.